Hey y'all, what's going on? I'm here for Black Ink Crew, um, New York Season 5, Episode 12. Like I told you guys um, the other day, you know, you guys were going to get this video today instead of yesterday because I had a lot of stuff going on yesterday. One being my hair, which is still not finished because um, I'm getting it cut shorter than this. Although I do like this length though, but yeah, I'm getting it cut shorter than, shorter than this, you know. Um, just want to do something different. I never had like a short hairstyle before, so want to do something different and you know I couldn't get it cut yesterday because I had to get ready for my friends uh, gender reveal party uh, we already knew what they were having I mean we already knew that they were having twins but um, we found out yesterday that you know they're having a girl and a boy so congratulations to Trey and Shalane I'm so happy for you guys um, yeah let's you know just get into this review so um, we're still in Puerto Rico or whatever Mel, she shows up with her dude finally, and apparently she ain't get the memo about, you know, the whole tattoo convention disaster and everything, and nobody is answering their phones for her. <clears throat> the crew, they're still trying to find a shop to work out of, and, you know, Donna's like, if I would have handled it, you know, we wouldn't even be in this position. Well, why you ain't step up to the motherfucking plate when Ted first presented the idea and say, oh, hey, Ted, let me handle, you know, the confirmation stuff, whatever, whatever. Like, Donna, shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, seriously. So, anyways, you know, um, I think Ted and Kitty, they were trying to, like, convince the dude or whatever to let them work outside. I mean, work inside, you know. Um, his tattoo shop and everything and you know that they could give him a percentage of uh, the money or he could come up to New York and tattoo whenever you know whatever he wants to do and everything and so you know Donna is like you know um, like you know pretty much saying that they should have been more aggressive with it or whatever because you know Ted and Kitty they had came outside and let them and had let them know what the guy had said you know to give him five minutes to you know kind of make his mind up and everything so that's why Donna was pretty much saying like you should have been more aggressive or whatever blah 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 about it and everything and they all like girl what like you can't just like Kitty is like you can't just come up in somebody's shit and be like oh we black and crew let us up in here and da 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 and all this other stuff and Donna starts trying to pop off on Kitty a little bit and everything and you know Donna I mean Kitty is like girl Girl, bad or whatever, you know. Um, I like I'm gonna really take some advice from a motherfucker who done got fired, rehired, and it's probably gonna get fired again next week. <laughs> like Donna was just doing too fucking much. So, anyways, you know, the guy decides to let them come into the tattoo shop to, you know, do tattoos and everything. Sees he comes in a little later and he's impressed that they pulled this off. So, you know, he's happy about that. Later on that night, they have. Henny and strippers. And you know, um, sees he notices that you know, uh, oh shit is drinking and everything. And you know, he like, what the fuck? Like, Nikki's supposed to be his sober coach and shit. And yet she over there drinking with him and all this other stuff, this, that, and the third. And so, you know, sees he had told Kitty before they had went on to the, before they went on to their Puerto Rico trip that, you know, um, he wanted her to look up some more information about um, Nikki and everything. So, you know, uh, Kitty, she has the information. She takes C's and Ted upstairs to let them know what she's found. You know, she was like that Nikki had a baby registry back in uh, 2014 and everything. And I, apparently there's a picture of her with the little boy or whatever. And then also Nikki is not 100% black. Now, to me, I don't really feel like that's a big deal about her not being 100% black it's just kind of like I mean whatever <laughs> you know what I mean like like whatever you know so like that part I don't feel like was a big deal but anyways um she probably just consider she probably just considers herself to be more black than you know white or whatever but anyways we get to the next day you know, uh, Walt and Donna, they're, you know, downstairs. Um, yeah, they're downstairs having breakfast or whatever. Uh, Tattoo Baby comes to sit with them. Donna, she bringing up Duchess right in front of Tattoo Baby. Talking about some, oh, did you see Duchess' um, Instagram post or whatever? Talking to um, Walt and everything. And, you know, uh, 
I think Tattoo Baby had asked her, you know, so, uh, do you think that... She asked her something about Duchess or whatever, Duchess and C's relationship or whatever. Donna thinks that Duchess wants to get back with C's and all, you know, Duchess got to do is play victim and everything. And, you know, C's going to, you know, go running back to the woman that he was with for five years or whatever, this day and the third. And I'm, and I'm like, what? Like, Donna, you need to shut the fuck up. Like, why do you continuously bring... Um, Dutch is up in front of this girl, whatever. But see, that's because you want to fuck around with a uh, tattoo baby. So therefore, you're trying to sabotage whatever the fuck C's got going on with her. So, anyways, you know, uh, C's and Duchess, they finally meet up later on, you know, that night and everything. Apparently, he been calling her non-stop or whatever. And that's why she, you know, decided, I guess I'm going to go ahead and, you know, meet up with him and everything. But far as she concerned, you know... She was, you know, she's like, you know, he didn't want to talk to me, you know, back in New York and everything. And they flash back to, you know, where he, you know, kind of stood her up or whatever and didn't let her know what was going on with his daughter or whatever, whatever. And, you know, she's sitting here talking about some C's don't deserve any of her time. I'm like, but yet you're here with him, giving him your time. I'm just saying, I, you know, so anyway, you know, C's, he's like, you know, you left me. And you didn't say shit to me for a month or whatever. And, you know, he's trying to explain himself. And Duchess, she, you know, starts saying what she's trying to say, trying to talk over him. And she was like, you know, I expected this. I expected it to be an argument or whatever. And he like, I'm not trying to make it an argument. I just want some answers. You know, Duchess, she's like, you know, um... C's got a history of cheating, so why, you know, you know, talking about the whole situation where old girl came to the shop or whatever and told her that, you know, C's was supposed to be uh, her sister's uh, baby daddy or whatever, whatever. So, you know, she's like, you know, he has a history of cheating, so why wouldn't I believe it? And it's like, I understand that or whatever, but I will say, Duchess, I mean, I know C's, we know C's has a history of cheating, but... You did just automatically take old girl's word for the shit or whatever instead of like waiting to see. I mean, waiting to get some more information. You know what I'm saying? You just automatically, like she come to you and tell you some shit and you just automatically run, run with it like it's, you know, true. You know what I'm saying? Instead of, you know, doing some investigation and, you know, making sure if the shit is really true or not. Like you made like a real rash decision. You know what I mean? So... Excuse me. So anyways, um, Duchess, she brings up the, you know, pussy pictures that she saw on C's computer and everything. And he like, I told you they won't mind. And da da da, this, that, and the third. And she was like, if you care, you would approve that shit was a lie. He like, bitch, you never gave me a chance. He ain't call her a bitch for real, but I'm just saying he probably wanted to at that point. Like, you, you know, he like, you never gave me a chance or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, he was like, just like the whole, the whole situation with old girl at the shop. You just left. You didn't give me a chance to confirm whether the shit was true or not. You know what I'm saying? And Duchess, she feels like as if C's should have, like, put the girl, in her, the girl in her place or whatever. He felt, she felt like the C's was just too quiet and everything, this, that, and the third. When, you know, she felt like he should have put old girl in her place and whatever this day and the third i mean he probably knew that the bitch was lying or you know so that's probably why he didn't say too much you know what i'm saying i mean i guess maybe he could have said more but still you still ran with the shit that she was saying you know what i mean but anyways um and like i said i still don't know if this shit is true or not with c's because of the fact that yes c's has a history but like i said once again you're you're the one who's with him you should have you know investigated a little more before you just ran with it so anyways you know um she like cuz I ain't fuck her or whatever and she's just like I mean I didn't fuck her either so I mean what the fuck you know what I'm saying and she then she here she goes sitting up here saying how C's don't support her or whatever and he like when I haven't supported you Duchess and she like you ain't even been the pretty and ink like that or whatever this day and the third and he like cuz I got my shit the right like what the fuck do you mean you know what i'm saying and you know she just automatically walks away and like i said but like i told y'all earlier this season where people were saying that duchess was looking for a way out like i told y'all i can but i can see that you know what i'm saying 
because it's like like i said how she was just so easy to just you know walk away from this situation or whatever you know it, it like it do seem like she was looking for a way out and, and and once again last season she didn't seem like she was all the way present into their relationship you know what i mean so i do feel like she was looking for a way out and everything and i mean she probably did love c's or whatever but it seemed like c's kind of you know like he did more for her than what she did for him you know what i'm saying but um yeah so anyways um we get to the next day they're on like a yacht or whatever c's he sees that shit is drinking yet again and he like you know what fuck this i'm gonna confront nikki tonight because i ain't got time then on the other side of puerto rico duchess meets up with mel or whatever mel is telling her about you know her commitment ceremony and how she wants you know duchess to be there duchess is like you know i'm not too sure because i don't want to see c's you know we just had an argument last night and you know excuse me you know he got a new girlfriend already this day and third and you know mel is like i think tattoo baby is just a fling i don't think that shit is really serious you know and um duchess she's still not sure about coming but she say, says that she'll pray on it so um sees he you know um they all making like a toast or whatever about family and all this other stuff and you know um they welcome you know they welcome nikki into their whole family dynamic of saying how you know the minute that shit married her she became a part of the black ink family but you know of course he does have his reservations which is understandable because y'all know i'm suspicious of nikki too i'm like <laughs> okay so anyways um anyways you know sees he says he's been worried about shit since he didn't go to rehab and then you know he ended up me, me and nikki and all this other stuff and you know um then him drinking all today and all this other stuff like that's been bothering him so you know he's like i want to know more about nikki because i don't know her and everything so nikki she kind of starts feeling some type of way or whatever and sees is like look I just want to bring up rumors that has been, you know, going around about you or whatever. I'd rather tell you to your face and everything because everybody acting like they scared to bring the shit up. So I'd rather tell y'all to y'all face. So he passes them the folder of evidence that Kitty the found on, you know, Nikki or whatever. Oh shit, he's not pleased by this and everything. And he claims that he knows Nikki or whatever. But earlier on, um, earlier on nikki got seasick and you didn't even know that she gets seasick and everything and you even said yourself it's still things that you have to know about her you know what i'm saying I mean, that you got to get to know about her but now you're saying that you know her no you don't know her oh shit you're still trying to get to know her you're in a marriage where you're still trying to get to know who your wife is like come on you know what i'm saying and he's sitting up here saying maybe if C's invested time into making his woman, his own woman happy, he would still have one and all this other stuff. And, you know, Nikki says she's never been married. You know, C's is like, okay, well, do you have another kid? And, you know, um, she's like, I only have one kid and that's the kid that y'all met at our, you know, uh, wedding ceremony. And, you know, um, or reception or whatever. And, you know, they ask about, you know, the baby registry. And that's when she starts getting pissed off and starts getting on the defense and everything. And, you know, pretty much she was in a relationship with another. Like, she's pretty much, you know, going around in circles answering the fucking questions. She's like, you know, I was in a relationship with another man at the time and things got complicated. And Donna is like, okay, like, that's not really answering the question. And, you know, what? She, he asked her straight up, are you a scammer? Like, like she really would admit that if she was like come the fuck on now walk so you know nikki she gets pissed pissed off and everything and you know she walks off and shit walks off once again like i said shit is the type of person where you can't really help him out because he'll all like if you're not being a yes man for him he's gonna automatically get on the defense you know what i'm saying and, and, and not try to hear you out. I know some people probably feel like they being nosy this, that, and the third. But I do feel like because they his friends and everything, they are really concerned. Because they don't know this girl. And this girl do seem kind of suspicious. Like, 
I'm not saying that he should automatically believe them 100%. But what I'm saying is, considering the fact that you married this girl so quickly, you should at least take heed to what they're saying or take it into consideration. Like, well, yeah, I, you know, I ain't really been with her that long and we already married and there's still things I don't really know about her, What, blah, 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 you know, whatever, whatever. So, um, I'll get more into that later on, you know, as we get there. So... We get Mel and her dude and everything. They're, you know, by the they're by like the water or whatever. And um they talking and you know, all this cutesy stuff. And next thing I know, he cuts her thumb with a knife and then she cuts his thumb and they put they blood together and I'm just like That that was disturbing. I mean, I, I understand, you know, it's supposed to be like a little cutesy thing or whatever, but it's just like I'm just mmm, all, all that bacteria and, and stuff that mmm, I, I I can't, I can't, mm, mm no. And then and then they jump in the water together. So later on and everything, like that that whole that whole scene just kind of I was just kind of like like I don't know if that was supposed to be their commitment ceremony by them doing that shit right there just them two cause I mean they ain't have no witnesses I mean I know y'all ain't getting married for real but I'm just saying like I mean if y'all gonna play like y'all getting married like I would have thought y'all would have had some witnesses and you know somebody to you know say do you take this woman to be your wife and you know vice versa yeah, you know what I mean but I mean whatever so Anyways, later on, the crew, they all get together to celebrate uh, Mel and her dude's uh, union and everything. And shit and Nikki, they show up and the tension is thick. Um, this is their last night in the PR. Uh, they ask about 113th. C's decides that he's going to, you know, open 113th back and they're all excited and everything. You know, and they make a toast about family and blah, blah, blah and shit. He immediately brings up the boat situation because it's like y'all sitting up here talking about family and everything, but family don't sit up here and try to sabotage uh, a family's marriage. And then I was just like, so Donna, she wants Nikki to just tell them the real story. You know what I'm saying? So Nikki, she comes out and says, you know, I was raising this guy's kid and everything, and you know, um. Donna, she still don't believe it, but whatever. So, you know, um, Nikki, she kind of feels some type of way towards C's because C's was the one who, you know, brought the shit to their attention. And, you know, C's is like, look, I've been watching, sh I've been watching shit since we was kids. And, you know, I'm going to make sure that he don't relapse. And, um, when he almost died the last time and everything, you wasn't there. I was, you know what I mean? And, you know, um, C's is like, I don't know you. I know him. You know what I mean? And, you know, uh, shit, he gets up on the defense. How my son will. If you know me, you would know that she makes me happy. And you should just accept it and apologize. And C's is like, nigga, I'm not about to apologize. Like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Like, because I'm trying to look out for you. And, you know, you send up here drinking again. And if she leaves you and you relapse worse, who's, um, you know, who's going to bury you? Not her. You know what I'm saying? And shit, he's still not getting it. He all up in his confessional talking about some. Pretty much, if you know that she's the reason why I'm sober and everything, why would you try to ruin that? And that's that's the thing that I'm talking about right here. Like, I feel like when somebody is on the on the um, road to recovery, they should not be in no type of... Re like, if they wasn't in a relationship prior to them... Uh, having like an alcoholism or drug addiction problem you know what I'm saying they shouldn't jump into a relationship when they're on the road to recovery at least for like a year or so in my opinion because it's like it just looks like you're only sober because this person is with you like you're codependent on them instead of you know what I'm saying being able to do it because you want to do it and being able to do it for yourself and if shit does go south you could still be able to be sober and not fall back into that you know what i'm saying so that's what i like and i've been saying that to y'all like i feel like he too dependent on her so anyways shit and nikki they leave because they feeling some type of way um 
Duchess, she shows up or whatever. Uh, one, you know, she, you know, shows her face to congratulate Mel and her dude, and she tells C's they need to talk and everything. I'm like, oh, I thought you didn't want to see him. So the crew, they decide to leave and everything to leave C's and Duchess by themselves. You know, um. Duchess says she doesn't want to fight with him and everything. He like, you know, you just left without hearing me out. You know what I mean? And it felt like you ripped my heart out or whatever. You know, she apologizes for leaving the way she did. She was just emotionally fucked up. You know, uh, she was crying, you know, because she, um, she was hurt. I mean, no, she's crying in this current moment. And she's telling him, you know, she was just hurt. Or whatever that he didn't have the conversation with her that day when they were in New York and you know um, she loves him so much and if it's possible to save the relationship then she wants to do that and he's like I'm gonna be honest like we at the point of no return pretty much what he was telling her you know what I'm saying and she starts getting more emotional like I didn't just lose my fiance I lost my best friend as well and you know they hug or whatever and he lets her know, you know, I'm still your friend and everything. I'm still here for you. Um, that was pretty much the episode, y'all. You know, y'all, you know, give me y'all opinions and everything. Uh, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you guys come back. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.